Absolutely. I've been hoping to get this for him. So now he's got the anything over five minutes last 24 hours thing. Uh, point like shot mythic. All right. Uh, when is the last time your group got to rest? Actually, since the last time I rest rested, all I I've done is buff adventure. up and go. A and my, since my buffs last 24 exists. hours, I am doing fine right now. I, um, I did when I thought I was going to fight Sephira. I used a few spells, putting up re re uh, resist fear, and then we didn't fight her. So I'm a couple of low-level spell slots down, but that's it. I'm pretty much fully primed and ready to go. So we're going to go through here. You stand in front of the portal that will lead you to the airship's deck. The vessel will take you to Colifer, where you'll have to fight Baphomet's Merciless Star Heavens and Myra. Let's do it. You have a long and dangerous journey ahead. There will be no turning back. You will only be able to rely on yourself and your companions. Before departing on this deadly and dangerous mission, you'd be wise to check your equipment meticulously and complete all unfinished business because this opportunity to come back here may never appear again. Oh, okay, wait, hold on. <laughs> now it's talking about the gear. It's got me scared. Um... I think I'm happy with my gear. Wait, what is this? Oh, this is secret ingredient. This is the thing that she gave me. Uh, once per day, you may use this ability to make all potions used by your party empowered and maximized. As if you had the empower spells maximized feats. That's interesting. It's like a... Okay. Uh, Aspect of the Asp. This amulet in the form of a snake grants the wearer plus 2 DC on poison spells. And all ray spells do an additional 1d6 acid damage. She's got lasers. Noxie can shoot freaking lasers. Wait, Lexicon of Paradox. Wait, did I already solve this quest? Lexicon of Paradox Part 2? I found this on a bookshelf earlier. But it was in this building. That's why it's at the top of the list. Alright, hang on a sec. Save. Uh, we're going to call it... Pre Noctacula portal. Just in case we regret. You gave Galfrey the first part, so it's rip. Oh, okay. Step into the portal. Day 20, month Ferris 3. Oh, we're doing it like this. Year 4716. The route marked on the map connects Alinthria and Colifer with a black line. It is a straight and steadfast. Fancy music. Just like the commander himself, determined to catch and slay his enemy, Hepsamira, Baphomet's daughter at all costs. The commander's crew looks impressive and menacing. A uh, gang of hardened skywolves and experienced aeronauts handpicked by Noctacula. Even the ship itself has a predatory silhouette of a military craft, not to mention a stockpile of supplies and a formidable arsenal. The voyage is only just underway, one day past, but the commander and his... Oh, are my buffs wearing off right now? Dang it. But the commander and his crew are already facing the first challenge. Having spotted the lone ship, a flock of harpies rises from the coastal rocks. Armed with hooked talons and carnivorous grins, they rush forward squawking. Eerie, harmonious, and enchanting songs fill the air. The gaze of some sailors go blank as they cast away their lines and walk unsteadily toward the ship's broadside to step into the void, where the sweet-voiced songstresses are waiting for them. The commander decides to... Oh my god, the evil option is to distract the harpies by throwing a sailor overboard. Jesus. I'm gonna attempt to intimidate. Chase the harpies off with weapon fire and battle cries. Success. Even for an experienced archer, hitting a nimble harpy in midair is no mean feat, but somehow the crew manages to strike down several with well-aimed shots. The screams of fury drown out the enchanting songs, and the crew drives the winged predators away from the ship. With shrieks of disappointment, they continue circling in the distance for a while, but the head, then head off in search of less dangerous prey. Many cultures consider malice and belligerence to be contagious diseases. In the abyss, one particular place transmits such quarrels in the air like a noxious miasma. The place is Amara Island, and the ship is flying right over it. Discord sowing whispers fill the thoughts of every crew member. Sailors suddenly begin casting hostile glances at each other, while muted but merciless brawls break out here and there with almost zero provocation. Such is the aura of Mara Island, the heart of malice and disorder, a cauldron of the affliction known as strife. Tension and hostility between the crews seem to grow by the second, and a stabbing seems imminent. For no apparent reason at all, a bloody and violent fight breaks out below deck in the blink of an eye, then ends just as quickly. The hearts of the victors fill with horror as they gaze at the sight of their comrades' lifeless bodies at their feet. 
The commander, who is just passing by, barely avoids a pointless death at the hands of a cleaver-brandishing sailor. Had the blade swung a few inches closer, it would have buried itself in his heart. Having reaped her bloody harvest from the ship, Mara mercil mercifully releases it from her grasp. Infuriated, the captain of Noctacula's ship draws his weapon and personally executes the combatants who dared to wound a guest entrusted to him by the Lady in Shadow. With a trembling voice, he assures the commander that transgression will never be repeated. Dude, that guy just lost like four sailors. Continue. Two days passed. A hurricane of enormous proportion. Dude, I hope it says I'm rested at the other end of this. I'm going to feel a little cheated. Because, uh, yeah, I had 24 hours of buffs when we started this. But this ended up being a four-day journey. So I hope it's not going to be like, you haven't slept in four days, yuck. Uh, a hurricane of enormous proportions rages towards the ship, threatening to crush the boat like an eggshell. One of the sailors balks at the horror, spreads his wings, and swiftly flees the deck, hoping to outrun the terrible storm. For a moment there, I didn't realize that this was a dude that had wings. I thought this guy just went bonk and literally leaped off the ship and started flapping his arms and fell. And that was in my head for like three seconds as I stared at the sentence and reread it. And I'm like, oh, okay. The effort is pointless. An airy tendril, a mere harbinger of the storm's full might, catches the fleeing demon, shreds his wings into rags, and rips the flesh from his bones. The winds catch the ship and draw it into a deadly dance. The elemental embrace lasts for hours, days, maybe months. Within the stormy darkness and the chaos of crashing salty waves, mere moments seem like an eternity. It feels as if the wild winds have subdued even time itself, twisting it into a bizarre spiral. The commander can barely make out the dark shape of the island called Alir below, offering a chance that the ship might seek refuge there. But what dangers might await the vessel on land? Would it be smarter to make a valiant attempt to drive the ship through the raging elements? Order a landing. Fleeing from the storm that shreds the skies like a hawk ripping into a partridge, the ship descends into the dense undergrowth of a leer. Will this decision lead to salvation or damnation? Only time will tell. Two days passed. As a rule, death is associated with cold and desolate places that look entirely unlike the density forest Alir. But one should not forget that in the abyss, alive means dangerous. After a night, a day, and yet another night, the hurricane finally blows itself southwest of Alir. The sky is clear, and the mass no longer shudders from the wind's onslaught. Upon emerging from their hiding place, the sailors report with unpleasant surprise that the hull of the ship is tightly ensnared by vines and tree roots, which seem to have discovered and captured their prey with incredible alacrity. A quick head count reveals that the several sailors have gone missing while standing watch on deck. Most probably, they fell prey to the near-sentient predatory plants that have made Alir notorious. The commander... I have a plus... Dude, I am the druidiest druid you've ever druided. I have a plus 42 to nature. I have to beat a 29. I don't even have to roll the dice. The commander tries to think of a way to scare off predatory plants. The commander orders... Yeah, I'm just curious. What did I What did I get? A 44 over 29. Yeah, I rolled a 2. I rolled almost the lowest possible thing. The commander orders the crew to weaponize the ship's barrels of tar. The alchemical substance is sticky and viscous, brewed to protect the ship's hull from the moist corrosive winds spraying up from Ishiar. Using it for a different purpose, the crew pours the thick liquid overboard in generous amounts, covering the twisting vines in an oily film. The vines twitch as if scalded with boiling water and hastily creep back into the jungle. The sailors break the ship free of the remnants of the roots that entangle it and do their best to get away from the island as quickly as possible. Time passed four days. Is that is that four days total or four days since the last time it said? I think that's since the last thing, because it said two days on two different occasions. The outbreak of the epidemic in the close quarters of an airship is a calamity that can easily turn any vessel into a flying mortuary, grimly cruising the airstreams. Unsurprisingly, the crew is horrified when they notice the first signs of disease spreading on board. In the morning, many sailors find themselves unable to rise to their feet. The afflicted are racked by a merciless fever, and several of those most weakened by the journey have already stopped breathing. Neither spells nor mundane cures seem to help. The commander... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Um. Damn. 
It is 100% within my power to make a hospital or make an undead crew. We've already lost, so we've already got dead sailors. So I could bring them back and restore our numbers. If I do this, all I do is just cut the losses. It's recycling. <laughs> Refuse to release the souls of the fallen and instead force them to continue serving aboard the ship. The commander has not given the order to release the lines. Death is not an excuse. The deceased sailors, bloating with putrid gases, shunning eternal rest, rise and obediently return to their positions. The living look on with horror and disgust. Three days passed. Every aeronaut dreams of to do this this three days after the bloated guys get up. This ship stanks. Every aeronaut dreams of distant voyages, gazing upon wonders and collecting a bounty after arriving at their destined port. But no one ever dreams of fighting harpies, monstrous storms, carnivorous plants, or invisible but deadly diseases. The crew is tired, rancorous, and craving an opportunity to unleash their anger. Brandishing their cleavers, they surround the commander. Not all of them, of course, but enough to pose a genuine threat. Um... Clutching his saber, the captain threatens the sailors with the wrath of the Lady in Shadow, but they're too tired and angry to listen to him. Nocticola herself would have had to appear on deck to cow the desperate Skywolves into submission. The commander... <laughs> Look at my modifier. Freaking one. Oh, what? It's using my... I can't possibly do this. It's not using my team's dice rolls, it's using my dice rolls. So, like, Darren has insane diplomacy, it's not doing it. This is Shulk is the athletic person on the team, it, this has to be me. So I cannot, even if I roll a 20, it would be 29. I can't beat this. Um, so my only option is, like, try to do one of these things and fail? Or surrender? I'm not going to go over the... I'm going to say try to calm them with words. I know it's not going to work. The crew responds to the commander's call for peace with irritated grunts. Their patience is at an end, and they look to quench their anger with spilled blood. With a sudden yell, the leader of the mutiny rushes at the commander. A violent br fight breaks out on the deck with blood gushing from countless wounds in the unfolding carnage. Not even the ship itself is spared, as an errant saber strikes sever sections of rigging and cleave holes in the sails. Dude, is he, like, flailing around on the, on the above deck? The airship, like a wounded bird, veers off course and begins diving nose-first toward the waters of Ishiar. The lethal collision puts an end to the melee, sweeping the combatants clear off the deck. Oh, bye. The commander and his companions manage to pull themselves onto a lone rock that juts out of the depths. The other crew members are less fortunate. Wreckage and floating corpses litter the endless ocean for as far as the eye can see. Uh, four days. The expedition has ended in a complete failure, as the commander is trapped without any reasonable prospect of reaching Colfer or returning to Elushinra. After days at return filled with nothing beyond subsisting on scraps of food and anxiously awaiting an unknown fate, the dark silhouette of an unfamiliar airship appears on the horizon. It spots the commander and changes course, heading straight for him. A ship approaching the commander sails under a banner displaying Hepsamira's personal emblem. The commander can already see its crew, silent undead, elite warriors in life, and now in death, armed with gleaming blades. The commander... tries to hide. No matter how craftily the commander hides, Hepsamira's minions have an obvious advantage. They can observe their prey from above. They quickly manage to find the commander's hideout and entangle him in nets. Having tied up the commander, the silent thugs throw him into a stale and musty cargo hold. Their captain, an armor-clad, desiccated corpse with flaming red eyes, maintains a sepulchral silence. Um, 20 is an automatic one. Metsuni is... That's for attack rolls, not for skill checks. Unless Pathfinder is different from D&D &D in that regard. When I played Pathfinder pen and paper the last time I played it, skill checks were not an automatic win on a 20, and one was not an automatic fail. Like, that was combat. On combat, one was a critical fail and 20 was a crit. Mm, a new arrival. Is it... In the PC video game, does uh, is 20 a, a win with a skill check, no matter what? 
I'm gonna wait on chat to catch up to find out. Uh, the captain, an armor-clad, desiccated corpse with flaming red eyes, maintains a sepulchral silence, refusing to answer any questions. In the darkness, tracking time proves impossible, but the journey definitely lasts days, long, excruciating days filled with boredom, bad food, and the sickening stench of corpses. Finally, the flight is brought to an end, and the commander and his companions, still tied up, are dragged out of the cargo hold. I didn't get to, like, use lich powers on the undead. Time passed seven days. Uh, the commander's equipment has been confiscated. Great. Oh, God, I'm gonna have to re-equip everything? That's gonna take so much time. You have been thrown into a cramped, damp cage by Hepsomira's servants. Your captors have confiscated all your gear and equipment, so you must rely on your own abilities. The bars of this cage have been completely rusted through, and it does not look as if the undead guards are paying you much attention. They seem to be muttering something beneath their breasts, their mouths moving in a constant stream of ominous whispers. Thank you. Lich, bend these wretched puppets to your will. You cannot resist my power. You belong to me. Your power spreads out from you like thin, invisible threads. They penetrate the empty skulls of the undead and spin a web of obedience and servitude around them. The whispers cease abruptly. All the undead guards open their mouths and declare with one voice, we cannot resist your power. We belong to you. <laughs> Let's muck and go. Uh, Mr. Rigi roll an extra dice if you want a skill check. Alright, well that was easy. Give me my freaking stuff back. Dude, is it gonna be right here and then I have to re-equip everything? It's lagging. Is everything I own in that chest? Oh no. Please re-equip it automatically. Oh my god, why would you game? Why would you do this? Reload? No, I have to do this no matter what. I'm probably gonna, I'll do this off stream. I have to find out what everyone was wearing and put it back. Why? And I can't even do like sort by most recent because literally everything I owned was in the box. Okay, we're gonna save. <laughs> we're gonna save here. I will try to do that off stream before the next time we play. Uh, I I would have actually been less bothered if it took me longer to recover my stuff. But it, it, because it took me two seconds to recover it, I'm more mad. Might want to start screenshotting what you have on. That's not a bad idea, Jackals. I could use my other save file and screenshot if I, if I get confused or just go through and just redo the, the logic. Okay. Uh, all right, I just saved, cool. Oh, we made progress. Um, I didn't realize we were gonna do that massive boat trip thing tonight. That was unexpected.